um, repeating Caesar's presentation on um, uh, discrimination. His main claim is that religion is an outlet for people to justify their discriminatory views. He has three secondary claims. The social identity theory explains that humans naturally tend to discriminate, leading to religious discrimination. Um, two religious organizations that contract with the government can discriminate on the basis of religion and hiring for government funded jobs. Three, religion causes people to discriminate due to the teaching that each religion offers. So uh, regarding his main claim that religion is an outlet for people to justify discrimination, um, my issue is that this is a bit vague and broad. He assumes that we understand the exact definition of discrimination that he is basing his argument on. Uh, so, uh, so what specifically uh, constitutes discrimination? Um, this is my place. Um, also, I, I don't see a controversial uh, nature or prevalence in the discrimination that he is um, presenting or a solution um, to his assumed issue of discrimination. Um, his first major premise that the social identity theory explains that humans naturally discriminate against outgroups. Um, there's a non sequitur here and that the, the conclusion does not follow logically from the premises. Um, I'm not questioning the social identity theory here. I think that's perfectly valid, and groups do cause discrimination. But um, with his definition, this must occur in all groups. So every group that every group that ever existed is being discriminatory against people not in its group. So um, if, yeah, if he wants to be consistent, then every group that has ever existed is discriminatory. So his his reasoning, his syllogism here, is that religion is a group. Groups cause discrimination, therefore religion causes discrimination. So the hidden premise is that all groups are discriminatory. So the Peace Corps is discriminatory against people that aren't in the Peace Corps, and all Cal Poly Pomona students are discriminatory to students not here, maybe at Fullerton, I don't know. And uh, the member of the Honors College are discriminatory against people not in the Honors College. And even in this classroom, people in Comto 4H are discriminatory against people not in this class with us. So um, this is quite a big premise to support, and uh, there's just a little a non sequitur fallacy in his logic. So premise two, um, he sets the ACLU to state his second premise. Um, he does this numerous times in his speech, and he quotes the organization saying that religious organizations that contract with the government can discriminate on the basis of religion in the hiring for government-funded jobs. So um, this point isn't supporting his case for religion being discriminatory. It's perfectly reasonable for employers to set up criteria to judge their applicants. Um, you don't want the National Board of Surgeons to hire surgeons that have never had a, held a scalpel in their life. And, um, or the owner of, owner of Coca-Cola hiring a seven-year-old man to be the chief marketing officer when he has no experience in the production of advertisements or internet marketing. Um, specifically regarding these religious organizations, not, not sharing the organization's faith, the religious organization's faith, logically disqualifies you from participating in that organization. So if you, if you don't believe in Christianity, why would you seek employment with a Christian organization? Um, again, this definition of discrimination is so broad it makes every employer susceptible, so the guilt cannot lay solely on the religious groups. Um, now looking at the ACLU, they are a radical social activist group. They're very biased and passionate for their causes. Um, a quote from one of its founders, Roger Baldwin, says, I am for socialism, disarmament, and ultimately for abolishing the state itself as an instrument of violence and compulsion. I seek social owner ownership of all property, the abolition of property class, and sole control by those who produce wealth. Communism is the goal. So I have multiple sources that are backing this connection with the ACLU and uh, communism or socialist ideas, including Dr. Paul Kangor of City Grove College. Um, so it's hard for me to accept suitable evidence from this organization when its fundamental members were extremely biased social radicals. Um, as I noted earlier, the ACL's definition of discrimination can be applied everywhere. And um, that also quotes Luis Melling in the, second half of the ad in the second half of his argument and states that these religiously driven discriminatory acts are being seen with increasing frequency. Um, again, the, this Luis Melling from ACLU fails to offer any supporting statistical evidence and only makes vague references to a few legend events. And so that's, that's kind of a weak spot that there isn't anything, it's a little conclusionary. 
Um, his third premise, that people begin to discriminate others solely on the fact whether or not they are in the same group, and that religion immediately puts someone in the position to discriminate due to the teachings that each religion offers, um, it's kind of weak here. I have some, I have quotes from uh, the scriptures of some of the most popular religions in the world preaching tolerance, and they all teach to be non-discriminatory and accept to those who believe uh, and behave differently than them. So from the Bible, there's John 6.37, all that the Father gives me will come to me, and whoever comes to me I will never cast out. Okay. Uh, from Islam, O mankind, we created, we created you from male and a female, and made you into nations and tribes that you may know and honor each other, and that you should not despise one another, and be the most honorable of you inside of God is the most righteous. I'm um, running short on time, so let me see here. So I have a, a quote from Lao Tzu's Taoism, Taoism as well. It says, I have just three things to teach. I have just three things to teach, simplicity, patience, compassion, these three are your greatest treasures. So there are three of the world's most practiced religions, all preaching tolerance and not promoting or enabling discrimination. Um, my final thing I'll go over really, really quickly, Julia Ward um, says, was his main anecdote, his attention getting um, uh, device stating that she was being discriminatory against a gay student because she was a counselor. Um, I just would like to point out that this goes both ways, the university fired her for not doing her job, but you could also argue that the university is being discriminatory against her because of her religious beliefs. So, um, yeah, and in conclusion, it's hard for me to align my views with the advocates because of one, his definition of discrimination applies to every group that ever existed. Two, because of his reliance on the ACLU, who isn't the most neutral or reliable source. Three, his assertion that religion <coughs> causes and promotes discrimination. And four, his inability to see that Julia Ward's discrimination against, discrimination against the gay client can also be seen as discrimination by the university against her religious beliefs. Thank you. All right, a couple extra minutes helps fill in some things, doesn't it? Uh, I thought that you labeled the uh, problem from the beginning uh, with the definition of what we're talking about uh, pretty effectively. That's a good general claim that's going to come up in some other places, and uh, you, you use that at the beginning to show why some of the inferences uh, don't really have as much meaning as they might appear to on their face. Um, the... Uh, and then there's also a little bit of argument about the, whether or not there's any controversy on this particular point. And I understand uh, the way you've developed that. You're suggesting that there may not be much argument on some of the concepts here. It's really the application of the concepts that's problematic. I like the, uh, the way that you talked about identity theory and how all groups basically would fit into this category, which means that, that all groups are not any different than religious groups, and so they're, you know, we're all likely to engage in this particular kind of behavior, that this is in fact sort of a self-fulfilling prophecy. And I like the example that you used of uh, kind of the reverse syllogism to illustrate that point. I thought that was a good explanation that also talked about the reasoning that you're using on that point. Uh, when you get to the second point, the label is pretty clear. Uh, you had a good argument about what the criteria was and what problems there were there. Um, let me see. Uh, and you kind of basically repeat the argument about uh, it being a broad generalization on that. The argument about the ACLU, I think, is an interesting one uh, because their views may not, in fact, represent mainstream on some issues. And I think you might want to point out that those issues are particularly applicable, applicable to, let's say, for instance, uh, religious groups or social groups that don't share their point of view. So, you know, talk about in-groups and out-groups, I'm sure the ACLU would fit into the category as well. So they're engaging in certain kinds of discrimination. The more generic tax on the ACLU, uh, you got to be careful about just engaging in poisoning the well kind of arguments. Uh, the, the, the notion that they have a viewpoint that is really extreme, I think, is as far as you need to go uh, in, in showing those kinds of things. And there